Jay Stevens from IWantaRock.ca, also the bass player for Canadian blues artist David Gogo, and a Godan Guitars endorser. This is my uh, my lovely Shifter 4 flame top. Awesome bass. Also seen in a lot of my videos. This is the, I'm still running the uh, same Elixir stainless steel strings that I've had on for, I've lost count now. It's <laughs> more than a year and a half. A year and three quarters or something. So anyway, today's lesson's about um, basically two-hand bass cording. Now, there's, there's two-hand tap that most people think of like guitar players. That sort of thing. What I'm doing is more uh, kind of comping organ chords up high. While playing a, a, a bass line with my left hand. Now, this comes in a, a lot more handy to me than, than two-handed theatrics. Uh, because like playing in a blues band, uh, sometimes if I'm playing as a power trio, it's nice to fill in a little bit of the chords up top. Just to fill in while the guitar player solos. Um, oh, I never use this when I'm playing with a keyboard player or an organist, because uh, I generally have an agreement in place that the organ player doesn't play left hand bass and I won't play chords. But all bets are off. If he starts playing heavy left hand then I'll start playing up high. So uh, I'm going to give you a couple quick easy ones. The, the left hand stuff, I was basically playing a walking 12 bar bass line. simple just essentially a one three five bass line um, you know if if you don't really know how to play that sort of thing then work on that don't worry about the chords yet but just a standard 12 bar you can come up with your own stuff but the main thing is because I'm comping chords at the top on the two highest strings I've got to come up with a bass line that fits the, the bottom two strings the E and the A so I'm never going past the A string so sometimes I have to shift position for it it'd be nice to go down but because I'm playing on those strings I can't use them um, this is where a five string comes in handy. I, I generally play a lot of five string and it's nice to have three strings to play a walking line on and then hammer chords up top. So for the chords, and I'm playing this in E, the, the really cool thing, um, I'm playing basically uh, seventh chords. And if I bring it up here, here's my root. My E at the 12th fret is my root. The flat seven, or the dominant seven, is two strings down, same 12th fret. Hope you can get a good view of this. So 12th fret on the D string, major 3rd, 13th fret on the G string. So I've got this shape, 12, 13. So what I'm doing is taking my right hand and tapping them with my index and middle finger. With the left hand, I'm just playing a root note, an E. See, I could go same note, but it gets too crowded if I have all my fingers up here in the 12th fret. So. So there's my E7 chord. Now the cool thing with this particular shape is the next chord in a 12 bar would be the A. So an A7 chord, I'm going to play like that. And it's still at the 12th fret. I've got my root A, 11th fret on the D string is the third this time, major third. 12th fret on the G string is my flat seven or my dominant seven. So notice I've got the exact same shape that I had tap it with these two fingers. My E was right here at the 12, 13. My A is one fret back, 11 and 12. Here's my A in a lower octave. E. So the great thing about using this for blues bass stuff in 12 bar Especially when it's just a, a you know a one four five E A B. Just my E's here, my A's there, my B is the other side of E, one up for me, thirteen and fourteen. That's my five chord, B seven. The A on the other side of the twelfth fret, eleven and twelve. My E right in the middle, twelve thirteen. So I've got three chords. My, my one chord, hey, strap 
blocks are important, kids. Uh, so I've got my E chord right here, 12 and 13. That's my one. The 11th and 12th fret is my A, my four chord. 13, 14 is my B, my five chord. One, four, five. One, four, five. So to get started on this, to, to try to get both hands going, the easiest way to do it is just play root notes like I was playing. Play an E and hammer the chord. Then play an A root note. Back to an E. Basically, I went through a, a whole 12 bar playing one bass note and a chord. And then what you do is start working on um, getting used to a one-handed tap, because everything I'm playing with my left hand, I'm not using my right for this. I'll put it up here and twiddle my thumb. So get used to just playing one-handed hammer-ons, basically. And then my favorite thing is is that that bass chord, bass chord, play off each other. Like if I'm playing, uh, say, a Texas-style blues, like. That sort of thing where I'm playing left hand, right hand. That, that cool shuffle going, that, that sort of boot in the dryer shuffle, you know, ka ching, ka ching, ka ching, ka ching. So, left hand on that, by the way, I'm just doing a descending line going seven, five, four, two. Seven, five, four, two. And then up top, because I'm playing seventh fret E, I was just using that E seventh shape up here. I'll make sure I play the right notes in A, but you get the idea. So it's kind of a, that cool, it's a great shuffle feel, and it's a great one to play over top of, um, you know, when the guitar player is soloing it, it fills in so much space. So sometimes I think of it like sort of ripping off organ player right hand type stuff, and other times I think of it like horn shots, like... That sort of thing. So there's a ton of shapes, but I'm just going to leave you with that one, the, the dominant seventh sort of shapes. So uh, remember, anywhere you're at, my root note, two strings down, same fret, that's the seventh. One fret higher on the bottom string, that's my major third. So I got root, major third. So the confusing thing is, every time I play that shape, say 12, 13, for example, it's not just E7, but it's also B flat seven. So every shape is two different dominant chords depending on your on your uh, bass note. If it's an E, it's an E seven. If I play a B flat, it's a B seven. B flat seven, sorry. B flat seven there because of the root note. E flat E seven because of the root note there. So try it out. Like I said, the main thing to do is start playing one root note one chord and play that over a top of 12 bar pattern so you can kind of get it in in time and in sync and then start working on a walking line and then start working on some some chord stabs here and there all right
quick and easy one for you. If you got any questions, shoot me a message, uh, leave me a comment, all that sort of good stuff. I'm Jay Stevens. I'll see you next time.